men went to the mountains to get rich. Probably more of them died than survived, and certainly more died than got rich. It was sort of the end of the discovery era of North America. Now he's living his later days in the traders are the ones that made the most money out of it. They were pathfinders. They were exploring new, uncharted territory. I'm a member of the AMM, American Mountain Men. The AMM is, is a, an invitation-only group. And I think what has drawn most of us to it is uh, most of us started out going to Mountain Man Rendezvous. The guys that moved on to the AMM were people that were more interested in really learning the day-to-day -day life. It was a full-time job surviving. Well, the AMM brings a, a wide variety of people from all walks of life to it, and they all bring something different. Simplicity, the connection with the earth, the animals, the uh, non-garbage, non-complicated, uh, dependent on only yourself and your own skills. It's a, a freedom, a unique freedom. You ask any of us what our, our most uh, precious precious feeling that we have out here and on the trail is the feeling of pure freedom. Freedom. You have written as a mountain man over the plains. It's interesting. It's just the common thirst for the knowledge of how they live, and we all learn from one another. Things like just being warm, simple things that we take for granted today. They didn't write about that in their journals because they they just assumed everybody knew how to make fire. The, the sort of Hollywood version of the, of the lone trapper is not the mainstream. They, they trapped in brigades, and that was for survival. Most of these guys didn't get rich doing this. Most of them, by the time rendezvous was over, they had spent everything they made. At these going for four to six dollars a piece in the old days of rendezvous, a good trapper would come in and be able to cash in for anywhere up to a thousand. $1,200 worth of goods. They did not uh, exchange money. They were exchanging this and bartering for goods that were brought out from St. Louis. And it was the finest felt for making hats. And it was very fashionable. And it was very profitable. The technology of the day is one of the things that fascinates me. The tools that they made that are, by today's standards, very crude. <laughs> they were able to turn out precision working parts. One thing that a lot of people may not realize is mountain men didn't have ammunition. When you went to trade, you trade for raw material. You could get your powder and you could get lead. And then you would have a ladle and you would heat the lead over your campfire and melt it and then pour it into the ladle and that's called running ball. We're living a, uh, a vestige of American history. Through our eyes, we're reliving it and hopefully bringing it alive for uh, people in today's world in a way that perhaps they're not taught in school because it's not written about exactly the way it was. Be the last of the last. <laughs> Hell, I was there and I know so were you.